Well, I have never seen so many books in one place before, ever. Um, we walk into a library and it's all in its neat little shelves. So there's a line in this play where Frank says, um, you know, I just put something down in my office and it stays there. So How do you make a room like this? I don't do anything. Oh, that's the secret. There's no secret. <laughs> I just moved in and the rest sort of happened. Yeah, that's because you've got taste. I'm going to have a room like this one day. There's nothing funny about it. Everything's in its right place. It's like, wherever you put something down, it's grown to fit there. You mean, it's a mess. Well, yeah. So this idea of just this mountain of literature that is discarded, that's fresh, that you can pick books up from it, you can toss them into it. What does it mean? Is it is it, do we, is it a good thing, is it a bad thing, what does that mean? And so the audience walks into the theater and I think they'll see more books than they've really ever seen before in one place in their life. It's about, I think it's over six tons of books. Um, and so, so it's, really, it's really this idea of these people living amongst the sort of ruins and promise of what literature is. My job is to, um, to set up the world of the play, to, uh, to find a way that the actors can start working with each other and playing with each other in order to find, really delve into the text and find out what's happening in each moment. And then to make sure that as we go deeper and deeper into the relationship between the characters that the overall story doesn't get lost. So for instance, in Educating Rita, it's not just a story about a really powerful relationship, it's also a story about a love of literature, about how literature and great works and great books can, can become dead and also how it be, can come to life again when people begin to appreciate it. O oh, Rose, thou art sick. The invisible worm that flies in the night of the howling storm has found out thy bed of crimson joy and that dark secret love does thy life destroy. Well, I love literature and I love drama. And anyway, there's, a, there's some meta theatrical things in Educating Rita. They go to the plays a lot. And, and Frank says, oh, I've become jaded or bored about going to the theater. And she's really excited about going to the theater. And she actually, with her enthusiasm and excitement, starts to get him excited about going to the theater again or excited about the things that he's taken for granted. So I love this idea that, you know, I've been directing for. 20 years or something. So I love the idea that something new or some new impetus or some new person can suddenly inspire you to love your craft or your, your art even more. Out, out, brief candor. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player who frets and struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. If we look at who these people are, I think it's about two people who are trapped within their socioeconomic worlds, one working class, one educated class, and that it's about how you can become trapped in those worlds. So this idea that you can step out of the world, the action of the play, Rita comes into this world, she wants to break out of her world, she wants to experience the kind of life that isn't, isn't isn't, she hasn't been brought up to experience. And, and then through her excitement and through her ability to do so, there's a chance at the end that Frank, the other character, can do the same. So this idea that we, we're not actually trapped in the worlds that we might think we're trapped in. Well, I'd love the audience to see Educating Rita, to experience and to see this incredible relationship between these two passionate, intelligent, questioning people and see how they can break out of the worlds that they've been trapped in and say, you know, not, not quite examine your own life, but to actually say, well, what, what is out there for me? Like, where, how do I go to the next step? Um, and I love people to think about what art and literature and theater might mean to them. Like, have we gotten jaded or bored, or is there a way of looking at it in a fresh way? Like, early on in the design process of Educating Rita, I said to the designers, I feel like this play is, was written in the 80s and I feel like Frank has you know, been teaching for 30 years. So when Rita comes into the play, I feel like it's like a breath of air and life, like a wind is blowing the papers across his desk. And I, I, want, that to, I want us to do that with the play. 
that we're blowing a, you know, a new life into this great play and finding a way to make it live again. Mm -hmm.